Good morning. Welcome to our worship service this morning, the sixth Sunday after Pentecost. And as we come together to worship today, uh, we're going to be um, emphasizing God's law along with the gospel in a, in a special way, especially as we listen to the book of Deuteronomy. The name Deuteronomy means a second giving of the law. And, and as we uh, focus on that, we'll also be remembering the way God has um, answered the issues of what the law expects of us through God's gospel in Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made Amen. heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, to call upon him in prayer and praise, and to receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his only Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins as a called and ordained servant of the word. And by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For our entrance psalm today, we're going to turn together to Psalm 119. In the, the psalm section at the very beginning of the, uh, of, the, of the Lutheran service book. As you're turning to this, I'll, I'll mention Psalm 119 is the longest of the Psalms, 176 verses. It comes in, in sections of eight, and each section of eight kind of stands alone as a way of glorifying God and exalting the Lord for the law and the use that the law has in our lives. And so it begins, and each, each section actually begins with a different letter of the Hebrew alphabet according to the Hebrew alphabet, in the order of the Hebrew alphabet. So it's a, a very clever psalm in the way it's written. Let's speak it together in its entirety, verses 1 through 8. Not the whole psalm, just 1 through 8. <laughs> Blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the way of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with their whole heart, who also do no wrong, but walk in his ways. You have commanded your precepts to be kept diligently. Oh, that my ways may be steadfast in keeping your statutes. Then I shall not be put to shame, having my eyes fixed on all your commandments. I will praise you with an upright heart when I learn your righteous rules. Your statutes do not utterly forsake me. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading is from Deuteronomy chapter 30. See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you today, by loving the Lord your God, by walking in his ways, by keeping his commandments and his statutes and his just decrees, then you shall live and multiply, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to take possession of it. But if your heart turns away, and you will not hear, but are drawn away to worship other gods and serve them. I declare to you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are going over the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life that you and your offspring may live. 
loving the Lord your God, obeying his voice and holding fast to him, for he is your life and length of days, that you may dwell in the land that the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle lesson is from 1 Corinthians chapter 3. But I, brothers, could not address you as spiritual people, but as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. And even now, you're not yet ready, for you are still of the flesh. For while there is jealousy and strife among you, you are not of the flesh, and are you not of the flesh, and behaving only in a human way? For when he says, I follow Paul, and another says, I follow Apollos, are you not being merely human? What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you believed, as the Lord assigned to each. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. He who plants and he who waters are one, and each will receive his wages according to his labor. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field, God's building. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the reading of the gospel. Hallelujah. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Hallelujah. 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 The Holy Gospel, a continuation of St. Matthew in the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. You've heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder, and he, whoever murders will be liable to judgment. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council, and whoever says you fool will be liable to the hell of fire. So if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, Leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother, then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are going with him to court, lest your accuser hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard, and you be put in prison. Truly I say to you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away, for it's better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body be thrown into hell. And if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away, for it is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body go into hell. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that everyone who divorces his wife, except on the ground of sexual immorality, makes her commit adultery, and whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not swear falsely, but shall perform to the Lord what you have sworn. But I say to you, do not take an oath at all, either by heaven, for that is the throne of God, or by earth, for it is the footstool, his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not take an oath by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let what you say be simply yes or no. Anything more than that comes from evil. 
This is the word of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We join together in confessing our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our risen Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Our text that focuses our meditation today is the Old Testament lesson read earlier. Dear friends in Christ, what do you think of when I say the words life sentence? I'm sure for most of you, you're like me. You think of someone who after making a series of bad choices, finds himself convicted and sentenced by the judge to spend the rest of his natural born life behind bars. He will, his, will sit in a space defined by the four walls of his prison cell. No longer can he come and go as he chooses. Rather, he must do what he's told, when he's told to do it. He has no freedom. And if he will remain in this condition until the day he dies. That's what I think of with life sentence. But today, in our Old Testament reading, we get a different kind of life sentence. I set before you today. Life and good, death and evil. You should choose life. Moses spoke these words over 3,500 years ago, but yet it's like he's speaking them to us today. I need to set the table for you here, give you a little context to what this, where this sentence fits in all of Scripture. This is Moses' farewell sermon to the children of Israel. He is, it's coming at the conclusion of this message. He's 120 years old. He spent the last 40 years leading this mass of humanity around in the wilderness between Egypt and Canaan. It was a journey from Egypt to Canaan that should have taken them a few months, a year at best. But they'd been out there for 40 years years. And now finally here they stand overlooking the Jordan River. They can see into the promised land. They're getting ready to cross over into it, to take possession of it, to take possession of the land the Lord promised 
forgive them, but this isn't the first time they've been here. They were here 38 years earlier. They had stood in this same spot overlooking this same river, looking into the same promised land. But that time they'd sent their 12 spies in to look around in the land to determine what it was going to be like to take possession of it, to see if it truly was as good as it had been promised them that it was. And these 12 spies came back with stories of how abundantly fertile the land was, the great crops that it grew. It was indeed a land flowing with milk and honey. But 10 of them, when they looked at the land, you know what they saw? They saw the people, big people, giant people. They saw a lot of them, too. And they saw their fortified cities, and they were sure there was no way they could trust God. They couldn't choose to follow him and receive the blessing. Instead, they wanted to turn back to the wilderness. They wanted to choose the curse. Only two, Caleb and Joshua, believed that they could trust God, that they could choose the blessing, that he would indeed give them the land for their possession, that he had already, in fact, given it to them. It was theirs. But the people, they listened to the ten, and they spent the next 38 years living with their choice. They chose the curse. They chose death. And their bodies and bones were scattered out over the barren wilderness that they journeyed over the next 38 years. None of that generation entered the promised land except for two. Joshua and Caleb. They chose life. And now here they stand once again. This is Moses' farewell sermon to them as they are about to enter the promised land. Most of the book of Deuteronomy, almost 30 chapters, is Moses' farewell sermon. It would have taken him four or five hours to deliver this message. So you don't get to complain if I go 20 minutes. Moses, in this sermon gives them, recounts for them the history of their nation, tells them their story, tells them of their journey. They were a people living as slaves in the land of Egypt. No way to get out of that. And they cry out in the midst of their anguish and torment, and the Lord heard them. He chose them out of all the nations of the earth. He chose them. He made them his people. He brought them out of the land of Egypt as his chosen people. And then he gave them his commandments, his laws. And they were to live according to his laws. They were to go and live in a, as a culture of life in the midst of cultures of death. They were to shine the love and, lo love and mercy of God into the world that had chosen to chase after all those false gods, into cultures that had chosen the curse instead of the blessing, who had chosen death. They were to be a priesthood of people, a royal nation of priests to the people that they lived with. They were to be totally different, and so God would use them to draw these people to him. They were supposed to choose the blessing. They were supposed to choose life. And we know how that story went, don't we? Time after time, the children of Israel chose death. They chose the curse. They chose not to follow God, not to live in his life and love, but rather they chose to look like everybody else, to fit in with everybody else. They chose to chase after those false gods of the nations. They chose the curse 
He chose death. Moses, in his message, told him this was going to happen. They were going to choose the curse. They were going to choose death. They were going to chase after false gods, and the Lord would drive them out of the promised land. He would scatter them amongst the foreign nations. He would make them once again slaves to the people that they live among. But one day, they would look up and they would remember the promise. And they would turn once again to the Lord and he would once again gather them in. They would be his chosen people. He would remove the curse. He would give them the blessing and choose them. Moses speaks this message to us today, too, doesn't he? I set before you this day life and good, blessing and evil. You should choose life. And when we set out so plainly, it's, we say, well, duh, I'm going to choose life. But do we? <coughs> we, like the children of Israel, live in a society society that surrounds us as a culture embracing death. They constantly choose the curse over the blessing. They choose death. Just this past week I read numerous stories of how our society embraces death. I read story after story trying to make homosexuality the new normal. I read multiple stories that embraced abortion as the solution to the unwanted pregnancy, the crisis pregnancy, the inconvenient pregnancy. I even read where the head of the Planned Parenthood had this great idea for us guys to give our sweetheart on Valentine's Day just what she always wanted. Hey, you're not going to stick around anyhow. Give her an abortion. I read stories embracing euthanasia. It seems our culture embraces death as a solution to the problem, not as the curse. They choose death over and over. They make the wrong choice compounded over and over again until they look up and they see they are setting in a prison cell of their own making. One they cannot begin to get out of. But it's not just out there, is it? It's right here among us, too. We, too, choose the curse over the blessing. We choose death over life. Do we indeed worship God only? Or do we also serve at the altar of greed and possession? wealth and power? Do we serve God by serving our neighbor in need? Or do we serve only ourselves? Are we the light of God shining into a world lost in darkness? Or do we save all that religious stuff for here on Sunday morning? The rest of the week, we live just like everybody else. You see, there's one thing Moses makes plain in this section of Scripture. Choices come with consequences. Choose life and good. Choose the blessing, and the Lord will give you life. Live according to his desire for your life, and he will Give you life. But choose the curse. Choose to live according to your own life, own desires. Choose to live your life setting yourself up as your own God. And you get the curse. You get death. Just like the children of Israel, we choose the curse and death. We make wrong choice after wrong choice until we are confined in that prison walls of our own making. Prison walls made up of sin and death and there is no way out. All we can do is cry out for help. And the Lord hears our cry. 
just as he heard the cry of the children of Israel and chose them, made them his people, led them out of slavery with his mighty outstretched arm, led them into the promised land. So he hears our cry for help. And he comes to us too. Jesus Christ, the incarnate Son of God, came to us, and with his arms outstretched on a cross, he led us out of our prison cells. He give up, gave us life by choosing to give up his own life. He died for us. And with his resurrection, he has forever defeated death. And he has chosen us. At our baptism, he made us his people. He placed his name on us, made us his children, his people. He chose us. At our baptism, we were baptized into Christ's death. We will certainly share in his resurrection. The life we live is no longer our own life. It is Christ living in us. So now we can choose life. And what's that look like? Well, we, Moses tells us, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I set before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. Therefore, you will choose life. <laughs> so that you and your offspring may live by loving the Lord your God, by obeying his voice, by holding fast to him. For he is your life and your length of days. He has chosen us. He has given us life, and we are now to go out and live in that life as his chosen people. We are to be what Israel was to be to the nations, a royal priesthood, drawing the nations to him. It's just the way we heard it last Sunday in the gospel lesson. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. We are to live life as he laid out for us in our gospel lesson today. <clears throat> choosing life. And as we choose life, as we shine the light of God's love and mercy into a world that is immersed in death and darkness, he will draw others to himself. They will gather here with us around word and sacrament where God has promised to be, those means he has promised to use. And they too will hear the same message we hear as we turn from our old bad choices of death and choosing the curse and in repentance turn to him confessing our sins and then we hear that key for our prison cell in the stead and by the command of my lord jesus christ i forgive you all your sins spoken through his servant sticks the key in the door turns it prison cell swings open to life. God says to us, as he has said since the dawn of time, I set before you life and good, death and evil. You will choose life through Jesus Christ. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep and preserve you now and always in the life he has given you.